All right, my name is Aaron Rhodes, and you're listening to the Shuttlecock Podcast. We're sponsored by the Vinyl Underground at 7th Heaven, offering new and used vinyl at 76 and Troost in Kansas City, Missouri. This week on the show, we have Jason Trout. How you doing? I'm pretty good. That's good. Yeah. I, I know you've had a, a little bit of a rough time today yeah. uh, with a, a swiped Royals hat situation. Yeah, Exterminator came in the apartment to spray while I was at work, and he swiped my new Royals hat, so... Can't trust nobody these days. No, that's <laughs> watch right. Watch your back. <laughs> watch your hat. <laughs> watch, watch your hat. Uh, no, it, it is funny because one of the first things I had uh, written down to ask was about um, your Royals fandom and uh, oh, yeah. how the the first single from the new thirty four EP is called Wade Davis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though he's a Rocky now. Yeah. How, how, how do you he feel wasn't about when we that? wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a huge Royals fan. Uh, I follow Major League Baseball in general, but uh, that was actually the working title for that song when yeah. we were writing it. Uh, it was during, that's actually an older song that we wrote during the uh, playoff run in 14 or 15. And uh, all of us are baseball fans and we're following the Royals, obviously. And and uh, that was the working title because it had some some lyrics that say like shut it down and it was just kind of like it's like wade davis you know tongue-in-cheek kind of thing and that's yeah. just what stuck as the as the title so that's the story behind yeah. that not too interesting but yeah yeah you guys caught some uh world series fever yeah well yeah, who didn't yeah um i'm still long for the ride but yeah well, <laughs> i'm hanging on we'll, we'll get back there one day you know new ownership that could be chill yeah. who knows um, new ownership new management oh yeah we'll wait, wait, have, have they Oh yeah, the new coach is like an old Cardinals guy. Yeah, he, guy he managed the Cardinals. That for apparently, a lot of people don't like already. Years. All of my St. Louis friends have have already uh, warned me about how much I'll hate him, but I got to give him a chance. Everybody hated Ned Yost when he came in, so um, it's kind of one of those deals. You grow to love him, and maybe yeah. he'll be different. You know, okay. so how, m- how many we'll years see. did we have Yost before we made the playoffs? It was ten so. seasons. Ten. Oh. No, before we made the playoffs, it was four. Three or four seasons. But okay, so we get we get oh, his name's Mike Mike Matheny. Yeah, yeah. Let's give him give him four seasons. See what yeah, happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> got waited out. Can't, can't be much worse than the last couple of years. Yeah, so. small market club. It's going to be hard, but I'm a fan whether they win or lose. So yeah, no, yeah. Like I I I felt bad though. Like I didn't. I definitely did not make a game the whole last season. Maybe even the season before. I was just like got it all got it all on my system for a couple of years. But I'm ready to. I went to I went I did go to one of the last T Bones games that they had at that stadium though. Um, they actually I heard they renewed that or they did, somebody did they bailed them out of the okay the that's dead, good so they're good yeah oh word but I went to a bunch of Royals games this year probably well not a bunch half a dozen yeah uh, R L who plays guitar he's one of the guitar players in Thirty Four he and I went and had Crown Club seats I mean literally right behind home plate yeah. it was the night that uh, where, where Tech Nine sits <laughs> yeah we're Tech Nine and we're Florida Man or Marlin Man sits yes. Uh, we saw Jorge Soler break a Moustakas' home run record. Nice. So it was pretty cool. It was a good night. Good Walk good vibes win. at the K. Yeah, it was good. No, yeah, I was – man, I'm going to have to post this somewhere at some point. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use it for like an art project or something. I don't know. But I, I went to the – I went to that T-Bones game a couple months ago with Matt from Bummer. And like the, the there were like two guys sitting behind us who like – we're just like heckling the shit out of one of the umpires for like two minutes straight after they like messed up some call and they were like having like a conference out on the field about it. And I got like a, a, an audio recording, like oh, a voice nice. memo yeah. of it on my phone. I'm like, I need to do something with this. Giving umpires so. hell when they don't make a call that goes your way is, is one of the, that's like a, it's a must in baseball, yeah. you know? But yeah, it can get pretty. Is 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 there one member of thirty four that is the best uh, heckler or best to is is, is R L good to catch a game with? R L is a great. He, yeah, he's great to catch a game with. Um, his baseball love goes deep into when he was young, uh, as does our singer Brett. He loves baseball or did love baseball, and he's kind of he's kind of on that like baseball is too long of a season, blah blah blah. But mm-hmm. deep down, he's I can talk trivia from the eighties and nineties you know major league trivia with him so yeah he's but, but rl's definitely maybe the, maybe he's becoming a hardcore guy that turns into a hockey fan is that uh, the path no he doesn't like hockey either he's mm. he loves the nba and nfl so 
It is what it is. No, yeah, I mean, can't really argue with a, a Chiefs game right now. That's yeah, not not for you. I'm no? not. A, I'm not a football okay. fan I, at I, all. I so you. I respect. Ho- that. Hopefully, for the city, they do well and they win. But I'm not a. I'm not watching when they do. So gotcha. If I can avoid it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I guess I was kind of like I don't think we've ever talked at length about just kind of how thirty four got started. So I wonder if you could walk me through some of that, like how you met everyone that's in the band. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of long winded, so if I get too long, let me know. But uh, so essentially, what happened was the f- the other four guys they they were all hanging out pretty regularly, already friends. Um. And so Phil, Phil is one of our guitar players and then Eric, our bass player, they both played in David Hasselhoff on acid, which was like a pretty well-respected instrumental kind of, I don't want to say prog, but kind of like it's kind of all over the kinda place. Technical um, metal. Yeah. Technical. Stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of well, heavy, well but it's like kind of yeah. rock. It's kind of like, there's all kinds of different stuff and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty eclectic. Uh, but it is loud, but it's instrumental and, and those guys were doing that and they, they've been a band forever. Um, and then Brett, our singer, was in At the Left Hand of God and Cicadas, which were like super heavy, like metal, like, I don't want to say death core, but like death metal meets like metal meets like metal core kind of thing. Just super heavy, you mm-hmm. know. And then RL was in like Flee the Scene and um, Maps for Travelers. So anyway, those guys were all hanging out pretty regularly and they, they were, we're, all the, around the, we're all around the same age. We're all within a year of each other. Um, so... This was in 2014. Everybody was 34. So they were just like, those guys would go out and party or whatever. And they're like, Luke, we should start a band and call it 34. And it would just be about like being a bunch of de- fucking degenerate. I'm sorry. I don't know. I guess I can cuss on here. Degenerates. And, uh, just, you know, being old and washed up and, and going out and partying and just like, you know, it's, it's a tongue in cheek thing. It would be funny to make a band about it. Degenerate is my favorite cuss word. I love degenerate. Yeah. Uh, I've never heard Total. someone call it a cuss word though. <laughs> Total, no, I meant well, like, I said, oh, oh I meant, shit! Can I, meant, I say degenerate? <laughs> I meant fucking. I said fucking. Okay, that's why. Oh, yeah. That's why. I was, my bad. <laughs> degenerate's a good word though. Just slipped my mind. It's so casual. <laughs> but those guys were like, you know, it's a vocalist, two guitarists, and a bassist, and they're like, hey, who's who do we know that's that's thirty four years old and that is a drummer? And RL and I, and all of us had known about each other's bands. RL and I were aware of each other probably further back than any of the other guys. Um, to say by grace ended around Oh three. And I think flee the scene started not long after that. So there was almost like a, not a connection, but everybody that was around then was aware of each other. And so he, he and I had actually like really officially met for the first time, uh, probably in the, I think the summer of that year or maybe early fall at a, our friend roadies for Jimmy Eat world or did at the time. And so we were at a Jimmy Eat world show and RL and I finally got to talk. And so he hit me up and was like, Hey, we've got this idea to do this band. You know, it's, it's, we're all the same age and we're just like, we've all kind of been around forever and we're, we're not trying to do anything serious with music anymore as far as like touring or trying to make it, you know, or anything like that. So it's kind of this, it's not nothing serious. Would you be down to jam? And I was like, yeah, because, you know, Dark Ages was kind of on a hiatus at the time. Um, we had recorded Vapor, but it wasn't out yet. So I wasn't really doing much. Yeah. I had been playing in Renouncer for a little while. Um, and so I was ready to, like, play, you know, in a band pretty regularly again. So I agreed to just come and jam with them. And, and at the first practice, we wrote a song, and uh, we were into it, and it just kind of turned into we all, you know – loved doing it it was serious at that point about like hey let's make this a real thing and play shows and maybe record and and uh but the name which was kind of a joke stuck yeah so it's kind of i don't i guess maybe it's kind of a dumb name but it's too late now yeah (laughs) so but you think it still is kind of a fun like a good mix of like just fun hanging out and yeah writing music that you're actually into i'd say this band is probably and I don't mean this as a knock to any other bands I've ever been in, but this is probably the most fun hmm. because every, every, everything else that we were doing that I've done, it was always kind of like we were trying to make something happen or it was, you know, um, I don't know. Sometimes I played in, you know, some things that it were kind of just like, I'm just doing it just cause it's, it's enjoyable, but it's, an, it's something else to do. Keep me active. Yeah. 
Uh, but this one is really just like, we've all, I mean, you know, I've only been friends with those guys since we started this band for so five years now. And, uh, I love it. I love the guys. I love the music we write. I love, you know, practice is fun. Practice is just like laughing at dumb shit and saying dumb shit and doing dumb shit and making fun of each other. And, and but it's never, you know, it's never, uh, it's never meant to like be you know, hurtful or anything. I don't know. I've been in bands where people argue and say shit to each other. And it's like, God, you clearly hate each other, but we're still doing this. Yeah. You know, this band is, it's, it's a friendship is, is the best part, but so, but yeah, we, and it's, it's turned into like a, a serious enough band. We've done some regional shows and we'll continue to do show we played Kansas city. And you know, this is our second record. So no, I was going to say like you guys, un unless it's like a friend, you, you, I saw you guys do have like a press person listed, like a like a PR thing? so yeah so our, our, well our first record RL has a lot of connections because of his you know he runs scene merch and mm. he's, he's he knows a lot of people in the music world and then and and his connections from flee the scene and stuff probably too but uh he he knew a guy that could do like some PR stuff and like I think sent out our record and got us some reviews on blogs and stuff like that um so he was probably listed on there from that or we haven't done any of that with this record uh not one bit. It's kind of late. Hopefully, you know, we'll send it out and get some reviews on some of the, you know, music blogs and music sites and stuff. But, uh, thir opposition or 34 goes back to their DIY roots. Um, no, yeah. no press release. <laughs> no, no AR. No, no prior reviews. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's always been, it's always been, you know, kind of DIY, I guess we, yeah. you know, we've always funded everything ourselves. We, if we had a, a, a PR guy or whatever, we paid him just to do stuff. So it was like, that was, you know, kind of a short lived thing, but yeah, this mm -hmm. time around it's really scaled back on the stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so when you were first kind of getting the band together and writing the earlier songs, like were there a lot of, uh, discussions about like, kind of different like sounds and dynamics you guys wanted the band to have or was it just like people were just bringing in songs and you're like oh that sounds good we'll do this and this like the one thing that we kind of all talked about before we jammed was that we wanted to do something heavy mm -hmm. um we didn't want it to be super technical we wanted it to just be kind of pretty simple nothing we do is hard to play but it's honed in on a heavy groovy kind of noisy you know what I mean it's like I think that we finally with with oppositioner it's it's more of where we wanted to be I think we found where we kind of belong with what we want to do for a sound um the first record is kind of a little bit more all over the place um and we're proud of it but it's like this one just blows it out of the water so but yeah that was kind of the only thing it was like let's do something heavy we didn't really want to have any like melodic singing um you know that's ba that's basically it mm. and we've just kind of stuck stuck to what you know we started doing so and and the the new ep is self-released or are you guys getting uh, physical copies yeah done? it's, it's self-released uh we we paid for it ourselves and had it pressed uh there's no i think on the first one we might have made up a label name to put on the back mm. uh this one doesn't even have that but yeah we have the it's it's a 10 inch vinyl a 10 inch um i think it's like a yeah it's blue it's gonna be blue uh, we just did the one color, uh, but yeah, there'll be physical copies. Um, it'll come with a di uh, digital download. There is, uh, our band camp, you know, so we're going to get stuff on our old stuff is on, you know, iTunes and, and Spotify. So we'll get this one on there too. I think that's something that we're working on this week, Sweet. getting that up on the streaming platforms. But so yeah, it it will be something you can, a physical version you can pick up and actually play, put on a record player and, you know. Oh yeah. And the the produ production on it is really well done too. I was listening to yeah. some of the tracks recently. Who'd you who'd you guys work with on uh, the recording? Justin Mantooth at mm -hmm. West End. Oh, cool. um, he did our first one as well, but he uh, he just blew us away with how he made us sound on this one. I, I, I I'm so happy with it. It's a uh, it's really a, a really full thick recording. You know, get, you know the guitars are super heavy. Brett sounds great. The drums sound great. I mean I it's he 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 nailed it. And oh yeah, and he's recorded everything we've ever done as a band. So he's kind of uh, we we call him the honorary sixth member of the band sometimes. Yeah. You know, because he's he knows what we do. He knows how to capture that sound, and 
yeah so shout out to justin mantooth and no yeah especially like it, it can like it can be very easy for like because there are a couple spots on the record where there are like kind of different like kind of like layered vocals to some extent there's yeah. like so like to kind of get that really right is can be kind of a tough thing to do yeah, and i absolutely. think it sounded pretty nice on there and i think you know when we record brett does all of the vocals whereas live rl will do some backups mm. but rl didn't record the backups so brett knows how to change his voice to like you know, he's like okay i want the backups to be higher right here and he did it you know what i mean so and and justin was able to yeah really mix those and 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 you know kind of blend them together well he did the mixing as well he engineered it and did the mixing so um yeah nice he's a badass oh yeah um yeah i guess um i was kind of curious um to get your thoughts on just kind of i don't know because you played in a couple different like you could say like just metalcore bands in, yeah in like the two like the early 2000s and i i guess i was just kind of curious of your opinion on like i feel like in the last two or three years there's been this just really crazy um revival of a lot of those sounds whether it's like bands like code orange and Vange getting really popular or even just kind of like like so that kind of heavy hardcore metalcore stuff that like is like everything on this is hardcore right now mm -hmm. when it used to just be a little more like kind of youth crew and like straight edge focused and then even there's all these bands like cu space cowboy and wrist meat razor doing the kind of like more like myspace era shit yeah. too so i don't know do any of those bands like really catch your ear or? yeah uh i dig uh, quite a bit of that um the thing about the early you know late 90s early 2000s more so like when i was in 18v um, that was kind of like, that was the era of sing scream metalcore, yeah. which there are very few bands that I like or that ever liked that I think they can really do that well and not be like corny, you know? Um, as for what's going on now, I feel like there's a lot less of the, it's what, what the bands are doing now is almost more on the, it, it on the metalcore thing. It's more core than it is metal in a way yeah or or more core hard, more hardcore than you know bands like uh, unearth and stuff were you know um i'm really into like uh, i like sanction a lot i like uh, i do like knock loose um i like some of the code orange stuff um and it's some of the other bands that are doing it uh vatican is really good um but i always liked and everybody that knows me knows I love 90s hardcore. And the thing about 90s hardcore, most people just want to, you know, throw an Earth Crisis meme at me and be like, ooh, you know. Yeah. But, like, 90s hardcore was, like, super diverse. It was more diverse than any other era. And that's what I like in hardcore. I like diversity. I like the fact that, you know, yeah, it's kind of more – right now there's a strong metal influence or whatever, but I think it's cool when you can get a band like Vane – and then a band like uh, True Love, which is like a fast, yeah. you know, kind of kind of on that American nightmare tip, but like a little heavier at times. You know, you get bands like that and play shows together. That's what I like to see. Um, a good variety of stuff. And, you know, uh, that's that's why I like that era was the all the different bands that played shows together. And we didn't really, you know, argue over well, who was hardcore and who was metalcore and who was this and that. It was just like. Boy Sets Fire was a hardcore band, as was Falling Forward, as was Earth Crisis. You know what I mean? It just it's all kind of under the same umbrella to me. Um, and so I'd I'd like to see it get back to that. And I think there is there's a lot of that variety happening, but I don't know how much they're playing shows together. And yeah. I can't speak for anywhere else, but in Kansas City, there's not a lot of mixing of shows. Yeah. So and there should be definitely. And um, no, yeah, it's funny you say that like. Um, some of the newer like kind of metal core like popular metalcore and hardcore bands like do take a little more hardcore than metal in their approach but like and that like people would like make fun of you for like liking some 90s stuff because like the way i kind of have seen like because you know i i got into like diy like punk and hardcore 
in like the early tens and like around then was just like this giant like kind of 80s midwest hardcore right. yeah. revival and like maybe it's just because i knew those bands better than a lot of the actual 80s bands just because i was like going to those shows every weekend but like i i still do probably listen to just like s- at least slightly more modern hardcore than like 80s stuff just because like i feel like when you're like fully like when the scene like when a certain like sound or scene has kind of died off but then there's like a revival of it somewhere like you've people have kind of had the time to like take in what made those early records good and like adapt and build on those and like like a lot of the 80s revival stuff in the 10s like a lot of these records are better than like actual 80s records even yeah. though they have a lot of the same shit so I, I and know it's almost you, taboo to say that yeah it's it's like somebody might say you're crazy for thinking that something that was done later is better than the original but it happens all the time there's it, that's reality and there's yeah. there's bands that did it later that were better and, I, and i'm kind of like you in that you know when i got into hardcore and punk you know my my gateway to hardcore was like skate punk like pennywise and actually green day uh kerplunk was like my gateway record um, and from there, it was like Pennywise and Screeching Weasel and Unwritten Law and No Effects. And then that led to Strife and Sick of It All. And and so I was into hardcore for a few years before I gave a shit about Minor Threat or yeah. Bad Brains. You know, those bands didn't weren't in my register. They weren't they weren't in my radar yeah. um, initially because the internet wasn't a thing yet. So I was into like Snapcase and you know heavier hardcore. And then it was you know a few years later, somebody was like you know, introduced me to like minor threat and, you know, I had heard of them, but I'd never checked it out, which, you know, would have made sense that I liked it. Cause I was into fast music originally anyway, but I didn't go back to the original stuff till later, you know? Yeah. So, uh, Kulo is better than the Ramones fight me. No, I'm kidding. No, that's not a real opinion, but I mean, <laughs> I would respect you if that was your opinion. I feel uh. like Kulo was the <laughs> band that, um, my friends, the pit that like, jokingly opened with the firestorm intro no i didn't i didn't and like just kind of made fun of it which (laughs) that's all i remember about them sorry no it's fine probably hurt earth crisis (laughs) isn't my isn't my end-all be-all band so i wasn't good i wasn't too upset about it but (laughs) that's what i remember of kulo if that's the right band maybe that that sounds like it could have been (laughs) Uh, (laughs) no but you're talking about um being into like skate punk and shit when you're growing up and I know you are you are a big uh, BMX guy. Yes. So, like, are are there any bands that are more BMX than than skateboard <laughs> that like rep that shit harder, or was like more prominent among BMXers? Well, you know, it's funny because I've never really thought about it, but there are bands that like sing about skateboarding. Yep. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember Bones Brigade. They're Not named familiar. after the Bones Brigade videos that you know from the early early to mid eighties. And all their songs were about skateboarding and they were around in like 2003 ish. And you know, all the song, I mean, all the songs were about skateboarding and the song titles were, you know, I think the record was called, I hate myself and I'm not skateboarding. So there's a lot of skate culture and hardcore and punk that's mixed together. It's funny that BMX didn't have that as much, but bouncing souls, which I'm not a huge bouncing souls fan, but they had songs about BMX. Um, those nice. guys ride, um, a lot of BMXers, uh, two of the like, c- kind of, it, you know, Dennis McCoy is a Kansas city guy, greatest of all time freestyle. Um, he's, he's into hardcore, you know, uh, when I ride with him, we talk about side by side and judge and grill biscuits and minor threat. And, and, uh, Rick Thorne is another pro that was from here. He's also uh, a guy that was, was into punk and hardcore and is currently, I think in a punk band, um, so there's a lot of writers who, who, um, are into that. And I didn't know that, you know, until I met, you know, met them or, or, you know, started riding with them, which is really cool. Cause I think we have that in common, but, uh, a lot of guys, you know, are into that stuff and just BMX just doesn't get repped. I think is, <laughs> I hate that I said repped, but Yo, BMX representation is, matters. <laughs> yeah. Man. Represent. Now BMX doesn't get as much love. I think, or doesn't show as much love. I don't know either way, but to me, skateboarding and BMX are a punk rock thing. And I think that at some point that all kind of switched to, especially with skateboarding, it turned into like a hip hop thing, 
but its roots are punk, you know? So, um, to me, those are, those are the most punk sports that there are, mm-hmm. I guess, if that's a thing. Yeah. Were, were there like, <laughs> were there a lot of bands you were like getting into through like watching the videos or like getting recommended by like other people you were like writing with and stuff? Not really. No. You were kind of, you, you kind of already knew a lot of the punk stuff. Well, it was a separate thing for me in the, in the early days. BMX was my first love. Uh, I, I, I saw Rad, the, the movie Rad, when I was, I guess, six. It came out in 86, so I saw it when I was six. And I was already, like, jumping the curbs in the neighborhood and popping wheelies and stuff. But I saw that movie, and it just, like, people are going to laugh at this, but it changed my life. I mean, it, it was it's still, to this day, I can watch that movie, and it's a bigger influence. It's It influences me probably more than any music ever has. I think, I've, I think I've seen you people give you shit on Facebook. Yeah, over that. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's like, you know, Jason Shrout, Fountain Drinks in the Lake and Rad, which is, you know, it's pretty spot on, but that's like all people want to talk about. You're about you the, know? the finer things. You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, BMX was a, was my first love. And I, and I, I had kind of stopped writing at some point and, um, and then got into music. And that's when I started playing drums and, and, um, uh, you know, getting into punk and hardcore and stuff. And then, BMX came back later and then then it was when I saw that there was like a little bit of a connection there were guys riding to you know Youth of Today or Snapcase you know at their competitions and demos and stuff and then I was like okay cool this is somehow connected that I didn't know you know and and it wasn't until you know probably I guess four years ago that I got back into riding again um, so I took I've taken a couple breaks from riding and the last one was really long it was 12 years or so so what made you decide to start again uh haro bikes made a a they started making these tribute bikes uh they call them the lineage series and they made this this it's a model called the fst which was uh, this this pro brian blyther it was his bike in the 80s and his they basically made a modern version it was basically just the colorway of his bike from the 85 and um, so it was modern geometry and modern parts and stuff, but it had the decals and the paint job from his 85 model. And I saw it and I was like, I got to get that. Cause I was, I was riding like free ride mountain bikes for a little while. And, uh, but that's the bike that made me get back into like actual BMX bikes. And so I called the shop who I used to work for and they're a Haro dealer and they were able to get me one like early and, uh, get it on pre-order. So I got that. And then basically just never look back. I've been riding pretty heavily since I got that. And I got that at the end of 15 or early 15. It's a 2016 model, but I got it in 15. And, uh, especially over the last two years, I'd say I'd, I've been riding super heavily. I mean, mm-hmm. multiple times a week when I can. So it's pretty cool. like skate parks with it or you, yeah, you skate parks. Yeah. Uh, I don't do a lot of dirt or anything. I'm mostly riding like concrete parks. Mm-hmm. Um, Lee Mack out in Lee Summit is, is kind of the main park. Um, and then some Penn Valley, some uh, up at North Park in, in uh, Pleasant Valley. Um, and then it's just a sprinkling of some of the other parks. But I'd say 90% of the riding I do is at Lee Summit. And that's, I mentioned Dennis McCoy earlier. That's his home park. He, like, helped design it. And and uh, so with him and some other older guys, there's kind of a an old guy BMX crew that's there pretty regularly. And I'm actually the youngest out of all of them. There's a... I'm 39 and then the next guy is 40 and then there's a couple guys in their late forties and a couple guys in their early fifties. So, and, and believe it or not, I'm the worst rider out of all of them. I mean, they're, they're, the old guys are killing it. So it's uh it's been, it's been pretty fun and, and, and it's, it's been something that reminded me of how I felt about it when I was a kid. And now I ride with one of my heroes, you know, growing, I mean, I had this guy on my wall, posters of him on my wall as a kid and now I ride with them and, you know, so it's like, it's, it's been inspirational, you know, to have that kind of, and none of the guys are dicks to me cause I'm not as good as them. So <laughs> I, they could have easily, you know, laughed me out of there, but it's been pretty cool. I've made a new group of friends from it and, and, uh, gives me something else to, to put my energy into and, and, you know, be active. Yeah. So, so if any, uh, teenagers or 20 somethings are, uh, listening to this, um, don't don't get bummed out and quit your shit or whatever you're doing. You'll probably be hanging out with your heroes when you're 39, <laughs> yeah, it's and possible. it'll be really cool. You'll be in your old guy rock band and ride with your <laughs> old guy BMX crew. Yep, don't give up. Always keep the faith. Keep the faith. Um, 
Um, another, I wanted to talk about Dark Ages a little bit. You oh, played yeah. with Dark Ages for the two uh, LPs that you guys put out. Mm-hmm. I think you, you joined like right after the Vicious Lie EP. I think I joined in January of 2010, so mm-hmm. they had already they had already had Vicious Lie out yep. as well as the demo or first seven inch. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I can't remember how recently Vicious Lie had been out, yep. but they basically like. Well, you can. I guess you can continue what you were asking. But. No. Um, yeah. No. I don't. I don't know much about just kind of like how the lineup changes happen. Like, do you know like why Mike ended up leaving and like how how you were selected? I don't actually know. I don't remember now why Mike left. Um, but I do know that I was approached by Justin and Jordan, or maybe it was just Justin. He was like, "Hey, uh, you know, Mike's." Mike's leaving dark ages and I don't, I don't remember why maybe he had too much going on or something or, mm. um, he's, he's always been doing a million things. Mike's a talented guy and he, oh, he, he does, does a lot, a lot of, of like engineering. Yeah. And stuff like that. So he's, he's always done a lot of stuff. So maybe he was just too busy, but, um, I went and had coffee with Jordan and Justin at, uh, mud pie on a cold January day. And, uh, they were just like, Hey, you know, we, uh, we, we'd love if you'd play drums for us. And I was like, absolutely. I didn't really need, need to think about it because um, I wasn't doing anything at the time, I don't think. I think I the previous year we had done the Black Mark thing and that was really short-lived. I mean, that was like a year. And so I wasn't playing any music, I think, at that time. Two, two band names, two two tapes, one year. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's it. You know, Black, uh, Black Mark was Crew Drugs, mm. which... It, Dylan Bendetti was the drummer originally. Um, and they wanted to switch to two guitars. Uh, so that's when I got brought in to do that. And I played on the wrecked seven inch, which is all I did with them. And then that was like the last thing. And then we broke up. Mm. But, uh, so I was not playing in any bands and, and they, you know, dark ages wanted, and I had seen them a bunch and I knew the guys and stuff and I liked what they were doing. So, um, I, I was like, yeah, absolutely, you know, let's do this. And so they had, I think they had some stuff they recorded at practice to, to kind of give me an idea of what they were, the direction they were going in. And uh, we just immediately kind of started writing stuff and playing shows. I think my first show with them was with Zero Boys at the record bar, which was really cool for a first show. Um, And that was probably like in March, I'd say, or March or April of 2010, probably. Um. And yeah, it was, you know, actually my first show, because Ben Smith was the bass player and Ben was quitting too, but Ben actually played, Ben's last show was my first show. Yeah. So we played one show with me and Ben and Jordan and Justin and then got Neil to play bass. Word. And uh, and it was cool because Neil and I had, we had jammed at the, at the storage mart like, uh, what was that called? We were going to do a band and it was kind of, it was kind of rocky punk stuff and and uh it just didn't end up happening mm-hmm. and so i was stoked to that you know we got neil i was stoked to play in a band with neil neil's super talented too so um yeah that was cool i loved being in that band that's um those two lps that i played on were you know i mean i'm really proud of them i'm really proud of my playing on them i'm really proud of the songs i think the records sound really good for what they are yeah uh, like production wise and stuff so yeah, it was really cool being able to to do that. And it was five years. Mm. I think that's the longest I've ever been in one band. You know, so um, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and I wanted to like I was kind of thinking though, like um, I don't know that probably was like like has been like the most kind of like punk oriented project like band that you've been in at least for like because you know a lot of a lot of the stuff has been like kind of heavier hardcore yeah oriented like so i I was kind of and you know mike has a a bit more of a punk background than than you do and like right so like i was kind of wondering if it took any like kind of adjusting at all at the beginning to like play like kind of a faster more like punk oriented style well oddly enough it it was easy for me because although I, uh, you know, all of my other bands were heavier hardcore bands, uh, time to believe was a youth crew kind of band. So it was fast. Um, but my biggest influences drumming wise, when I started were, uh, 
skate punk bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, strung Out, Lag Wagon, No Use for a Name. You are a KC's foremost Strung Out fan. I do. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm. That's my favorite. It's not even my favorite band in the world. That doesn't do it justice. I love that band more than anything. Um, I don't know what it. I don't know what the connection that I have with with the music and and everything about it is. I can't. Ext- I can't describe it. Um, so that yeah, that's my favorite band. Their drummer. Well, they have a new drummer now, but the drummer that I grew up idolizing is a total ripper. And so you know, between him and Pennywise and all those bands, like I was when I was playing drums by myself at home, I was playing fast stuff. Yep. Um, and that's where all of the, the stuff I did with dark ages, uh, it's all influenced by skate punk yep. drummers that the good skate punk drummers that, you know, could play. Um, I was, I was stealing a lot of stuff from those guys. Um, so it, it came pretty natural to me to play fast. Mm. It, it took, it took a little bit of adjusting as far as like stamina in a show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, shoot that I was younger than I was almost 10 years ago and, yeah. and I was in better shape. So <laughs> it wasn't that hard. Uh, playing dark ages songs now would be really hard, probably fit like physically just cause I'm out of shape. But, um, yeah, no, it was a, it was an easy transition for me to do that. And I was really stoked to, I think that's one of the reasons that, that I was so into it is cause it was, I think what I did by bringing those influences in to the drumming, which didn't really affect anything else in the sound, but I think it gave us a almost progressive kind of thing, like a weird progressive kind of tip to it yeah. that um, that probably wasn't there before. Um, Mike was more of a straightforward drummer, uh, and Mike, you know, Mike can play like twenty instruments. You know, he's it's, I'm jealous of stuff like that, but but he was more of a straightforward drummer. So I was I was in there to kind of change it up a little bit and yeah. make it weird. Definitely. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, yeah, you can definitely like hear the difference between Vicious Lie and Can America Survive, so no and um No oh, yeah, and just as I mentioned before we were recording, like Dark like the Dark Ages at Asshole Castle show for Choose DIY Fest was like my second DIY show and very important. So thank you. I, I was glad to be a part of that, man. That's uh that's cool. I uh I remember some vivid moments from that fest and then I've forgotten some things, but it was, it was chaos. So that was a good way for you to be introduced to, I think so to this whole thing. Uh, And a lot of, a lot of, uh, mixed bills on that and a lot of cool, like there's screamo bands playing with hardcore bands playing with garage and punk stuff. So, well, and dark ages played with like, I think we played with some doomier bands quite a few times. Mm. And I think, you know, now if you, if you, have a show that's like that if it's like a doom band or something it's pretty much you you know it's going to be like inner altar playing or keith mountain i don't think these days they would ask a punk band to do it yeah so i think that was cool that you know we were able to do stuff like that but oh and that reminded me um the thing i mentioned earlier was um i saw today when i was getting my questions ready and everything um I saw the El Torreon cage match video. With oh yeah, Saved by Grace and Sister Mary Rottencrotch yeah. going like back to back, in in a cage built on the stage at El Torreon. Yeah, what they did was they put a they put a just a one one line of fence at the very front of the stage, mm-hmm. and the stage there was in a corner, um, so it was just like run from one side to the next, yeah. and they had both of. And this was actually a, sh- a whole show. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it was six or eight bands, but us and Sister Mary were the headlining bout, I yeah. guess, and we were both set up on stage at the same time. And uh, yeah, we would play a couple songs, and then they'd play a couple songs, and then we'd play a couple songs, and yeah, no, that was cool. That that fence looked like it was like impressively well built. Like there were people like climbing up it to yeah. like sing along and stuff. I'm like, how did nobody just like knock the whole thing over and die? There was actually either barbed wire or slice wire on the yeah, top. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, someone's gonna cut their <laughs> shit open. I don't know if that was a Brian Baum who had something to do with because Brian was running the Altorion then. I don't know if he had something to do with building the fence, but maybe if he hears this, he can he can let us know. Uh, what was the, uh, you know, what was behind constructing that? Because it was sturdy. Yeah. And you know, our singer Josh, when he's climbing up, he's he was a little dude, but 
still there's you know i'm pretty sure brett ray's climbing up it at one point and so it, yeah it was holding some weight dude do you remember like i don't maybe it said in the video description or something but do you remember any of the other like duo like band duos that were on that i do there was uh oh man it, so it was us and sister mary rotten crotch yeah. punchline and tank array and then oh god uh ben byers miss band with brett ray uh God, what were they called? Uh, I'm, I'm blanking, but there was. I, I want to say now that there was there was three mm. there was three bouts, so six bands. Nice. Um, and I can't remember the name of the the first bands, but I'm pretty sure Tank Array and Punchline were the second bout. So there was like an opening yeah. thing, and then yeah, but I can't remember who at this point. But I. The flyer is somewhere, yeah, and I've seen it this year, but I just can't remember who it is. It sound, sounds like a classic gig. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, that, and that's the thing is, you know, El Torreon at the time, especially because, you know, Brian was like booking all the shows pretty much, and or the majority of the shows anyway, and, and they were down to do stuff like that. There was a lot of mixed shows. I mean, that's not the first time we played with, with punk bands or, you know, because to, to us, it wasn't really... I mean, punk and hardcore come from the same place. Even though we were more of a metallic hardcore band or metalcore band, it was, it all came, we all grew up listening to punk and, and hardcore. So it was like, you know, come from the same place. We just didn't have mohawks and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Who needs them? <laughs> I don't know. Does anybody in 2019? I, I hope not. <laughs> uh, okay. And you also, like, kind of like on and off, you've spent time playing in trial, right? Yeah. Uh, I've done a full tour and then, uh, so that was in 2012 and then they, they did some other things after that, that they wanted me to do with them. But it was like that first tour I did with them in 2012, it was a West coast tour. It was like two, two or three weeks. And, uh, I had spent all my vacation time doing that from yeah. work. And so they did another U S like East coast tour or something. It was like the other half of the country. Um, that they didn't cover on that first tour that year. Um, I wasn't able to do that. And then there's been a couple other things. And then last year I was finally able to do another show with them, uh, at new age records, 30th anniversary deal. And, uh, that was cool. And they, I mean, yeah, I pretty much have, if they want to do anything, they, they have expressed that they'd like me to be the guy. So as long as I'm able to do it, um, then I'll do it, you know? And it's usually like, it's, you know, we'll fly you out somewhere and we'll practice for a couple of days and then we'll go play a show. And yeah. if it doesn't cost me a bunch of money and, and you know, so yeah, I'm how, always how down you, to do it. How'd you first meet those guys? I had met Tim. Actually I'd met, I'd met them just, you know, saying hello. I went to the first reunion, um, back in 2005, they, they played a reunion show at Numos in Seattle and it was the first time they had played since they broke up in 2000 or 99. And the one time they played in this area, or they, they actually played here a couple times, I think, but they played at, I want to say they played Daily Grind in like 95 or 96, and I wasn't at that show. And then they played out in Lawrence at uh, this dude, Big John, John Momberg, his dad let him do shows at his church. So there was like this one summer, there was like Bain played there, like Saves the Day, Fast Break, I think Ten Yard Fight played there. Uh, so it was like a bunch of good shows, but Trial uh, played there. And I wasn't at that show either. I still have the flyer. I missed the show. And uh, so I I had not seen Trial ever until the reunion in 05. And they were, they were one of my favorite bands of all time. I mean, the Are These Are, Are These Our Lives LP is, is a masterpiece, uh, lyrically, musically. And the way the, the order the songs are in, I mean, to me, it's just, it's a flawless record. And... um. I had met my girlfriend at the time, the ex-girlfriend, you know, from, from when I was in 18 visions, she had met Tim somehow. And so I had kind of gotten to know Tim a little bit through, through her. And then we kind of stayed in touch. And then Tim did a band called wait in vain, uh, around Oh eight, Oh nine. And was like, Hey, move out to Seattle and play in this band, you know? And I'm like, I just, I had just, you know, uh, the whole 18 V thing has had, had passed. And I was just like, working a job and kind of like living a regular life. And I was like, man, I don't know if I want to move for a hardcore band again or a band. And, uh, but he kept kind of bugging me about it and I just ended up not doing it. And, uh, 
so then they hit me up again and, and we just stayed in touch. They hit me up again in 2012 about that tour. And we're like, Hey, you know, we're going to do this West coast tour. Please do it. And I'm like, finally, yeah, I'll be, I think I'll be able to do it. You know? So I ended up doing that. And, and ever since then, it's kind of been like, like I said, I, I've had to sit down. I sit out on a few things because I only have so much vacation time at work and, uh, I have a good career now, so I'm not going to quit my job to play a reunion tour or something. So I do it when I can. And it's, it's been awesome. Uh, last year was a pretty cool show. We played that, that new age 30 thing was like a, a bunch of bands I grew up loving and, you know, and then yeah, they, who else was on that? I remember hearing about that. Show. Oh God. It was like, we, we actually headlined, but so like the last, it was a full day. The last like six bands or seven bands was like countervail, uh, m- like course of disapproval, mean season, mouthpiece, strife, and then there was all these like current bands that played like leading up to that. So like Red Bait from St. Louis, who is awesome and uh, great friends, they played, they killed it. Uh, uh, I think Restraining Order, yeah, Restraining Order played. I mean, God, it was like thirty bands. Mm. Well, and, was uh, Jacob with them on that tour? No, he wasn't yeah. there. Um, but they were awesome. They, I think it was them that did a Bad Brains cover, and like it was, it, if you do a Bad Brains cover, you're treading sacred ground, and you really better kick ass on it you know and they just nailed it i mean it was i my hair standing up talking about it it was they they were fucking awesome um yeah there was a lot of good bands played that day uh and then you know the old dogs came out and and kind of closed it out and it was cool but yeah it was kind of weird it's weird it's still weird to me being a part of that and being friends with those guys and and yeah i have I, you know the bonds that we've made through doing that i've, I've become good friends with everyone and, and actually the guy that plays bass his name's roger he used to play in like Love is Red and Sinking Ships. And so I know Roger from Love is Red. Say by Grace and Love is Red were on the same label and started around the same time. And I had actually played drums for them on a tour that they did with us. And uh, so he's like a super old friend. But yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool kind of being a part of a band that I've, you know, been influenced by forever. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's most of what I had for you. Um, where. Yeah, when when does uh, the new 34 record come out and where can people find it and everything and follow you guys? Uh, December 6th is the the release date as well as the record release show. Um, that's at Riot Room with uh, Hyborian and our friends from Omaha called Pro Magnum and then Crisis Actor is also playing. Um, so that's it. Yeah, Riot Room, December 6th. Um, that'll be the best place to, to get physical copies is as far as that day. Mm-hmm. Um, we already have the records in hand, so they will be there. Um, and then, you know, our, it'll be on our band camp. Um, it's going to be on Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. Um, so you can stream it if you want, if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, it's called oppositioner. Uh, and what else, what, what else were you asking uh, about? You guys are on like Facebook Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, thirty four KC Mo. Yeah, the social media is. I think pretty much all thirty four KC Mo. Facebook is thirty four KC Mo. Uh, Instagram is thirty four KC Mo. Uh, Bandcamp is thirty four KC Mo. Dot Bandcamp. Dot com. I think our Twitter, which we don't haven't used for two years, is thirty four KC Mo. The only thing that's not thirty four KC Mo, I think, is our YouTube, which is like thirty four band KC. It's something stupid that. It's like off, but yeah, you can see like we have it's like lyric videos and like whatever music videos we've done are on there. Sweet. So yeah, that's how you can get a hold of us. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and people can follow at Shuttlecock Mag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Visit shuttlecockmusic.com for all the articles. Subscribe to the newsletter. Um, shuttlecockmag.bigcartel.com is where you can get zines and buttons. Uh, we'll have new t-shirts on there soon. Uh, we'll be at the uh, I think we'll have new shirts at... Oh, yeah, there's the button there. It's awesome. big. Yeah, big stu- stupid big button. Th- three inches, I think. Um, and yeah, well, I'll have new t-shirts for... Um, I think we'll have them at the Oddities Expo and Open House. That is early December as well, so that'll be cool. And um, check out the Facebook events tab for... We have like four or five shows booked this winter. Chubby and the Gang from... United Kingdom is coming. Very cool British oi band playing at the Parker House. Then just a bunch of other cool rock shows. But 
Yeah, I appreciate you being on the show today, Jason. I appreciate you fun. having me, man. It was cool. For sure. All right. Well, right on, man. See you. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out. Get out of here. <laughs>